This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Earlier, I used the brushes that are presets built into Photoshop Elements that are included with the application. Brushes are one of the most fun features of the application, especially if you need to color things or you like to paint, or maybe you just want to create distressed text or distressing effect or rust or other grunge effects. Whatever you're using them for, they can be a lot of fun. You can make brushes from a wide variety of sources. Pretty much anything you can select can be made into a brush. You can also download thousands of Photoshop brushes from the web. Just do a quick Google search for Photoshop brushes and you'll find so many websites you won't believe it. If you're on DeviantArt, that's DeviantArt.com, it's a artist's website. You can also find a wide variety of Photoshop brushes there as well, and also on Flickr. So a lot of the social networks, a lot of the social artist sharing spaces have Photoshop brushes that you can use. Before you use them, check the license. Make sure that you can use them for whatever you want. Some people have weird ideas of what their brushes should be used for. Now, what I'd like to do here is create a brush from this photograph. I want to create a series of scratch brushes. This file is in the working files folder. It's called scratches underscore PP digital underscore morgue file. This is actually from a website called morguefile.com, M-O-R-G-U-E file.com. It's basically a free stock image repository for creatives by creatives. And the artist who did this is named PP Digital. He's a really good photographer, does a lot of textural stuff, a lot of like macro photography. And I highly recommend checking out the site and his work specifically. Now, the first thing to know about brushes is that when they're made, they're black and white. So they'll apply color, but the brushes themselves are in general black and white. So I want to desaturate this image first. Enhance, adjust color, remove color. Now what it leaves me with is a grayscale image, but in general brushes are solid black and solid white. So I'm gonna jump back to enhance, adjust lighting, and I'm gonna go to levels. I'm gonna adjust the input levels so the black slider starts a lot sooner. So more of these pixels are signed to black. To eliminate the white areas and give myself a very high contrast image, I'm going to slide the white slider in towards the center. So this eliminates all the gray scale in this image and gives me a really, really high contrast. Now there's still a lot of speckles in the middle and that can actually be pretty interesting. I could also adjust the center slider, the gamma if I wanted, to force more of those speckles to become black by moving the slider towards the white slider, or force more of them to become white. It depends on whether you want the scratches you're going to create to be really, really open and gappy or not. It's up to you. So I like this setting. The levels adjustment, as I've talked about before, allows me to reassign the pixels of the image to be more black and more white. So it enhances the contrast in this case. I'll click OK. Now, you can make a brush from anything you can select. So I'm going to take the lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw a quick lasso right up here around these scratches. And there's a lot to choose from here, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. So I grab this, and then it's going to be simply Edit, Define Brush from Selection, and I'm going to name it Scratch 1. And then OK. Then I'm going to select something else. I'll grab these areas over here. And same thing, edit, define brush from selection, scratch to. And so on and so forth. I'd keep doing it. I want to make this really big scratch into a selection. And you don't have to be perfect with selections. You can pretty much be as rough as you want because in this case, I'm making scratches. So I really kind of want it to be rough and I want it to be jaggedy. Edit, define brush from selection. And I would keep doing this. I'd keep making selected areas, keep making selections. I'm going to deselect that. Now I'm going to save this file. File, save as. 
I'm just going to change the last extension of the name, edited one, to brush base. I'm going to make the format Photoshop. Though technically, because I'm not really keeping this as a layered file, it should be fine. I just don't want to save it as a JPEG again, because every time I save a JPEG over itself as a JPEG, it loses a little bit of quality. So Photoshop documents make a great archival format if you plan to return to this. And this is the kind of document that could be really great for making brushes, because there's so many different areas to choose from. I'll keep all the defaults and click Save. Now those brushes are technically available to you right now. I'll make a new document. File, new, blank file. I'm actually gonna choose from photo. I'm actually gonna choose to make a two by three file. Pretty small. Okay. Again, I'm gonna consolidate all. And basically here's what I can do. The brush tool, now at the bottom of this list of brushes, I have the ones that I made. I like this big, big scratch. Now, I can't really see anything. All I see is a little crosshair. Now there's two reasons for that. One could be the brush is too small, but in this case, it's the brush is so large, like so. I'm gonna set my colors to default by pressing D on the keyboard. That sets my foreground color to black and my background color to white. I use the left bracket key to shrink the brush because that's what I figured. I figured it was a little too big. And then all I gotta do now is just click and it paints on that scratch, that brush stroke. So it can be really great, really fun to work with. I'm gonna grab a, another brush. I'll take that little speckled one that I made before, like so, and same thing. So it gives me a lot of flexibility here. It's really kind of fun, very easy to create your own brushes, and they can be used for whatever you like. I'm gonna grab that spotted brush I made. Now, this I'd like to do a little something different with. I'm gonna click on the Brush Options button, and what I wanna do is I wanna scatter this. I'm gonna increase the spacing a little bit. What scattering allows me to do is this. It actually, every time I click and drag, instead of applying one brush tip, it actually applies multiple ones. Now, this is a great way of adding a bunch of texture or spots or scratches or anything you want multiple versions of in your document. So the brushes are extremely fun and very powerful and very easy to work with. When you download a brush library, the way you import it, Edit, Preset Manager. The Preset Manager allows you to manage the brushes and the gradients and the patterns that are included in the file. So these are all things that can be saved by other people and then imported into your document. To import new brushes, you simply go to the Preset Manager and choose Load. It'll give you a standard file search field, and you search for the file you downloaded. Double-click on it, and it loads into the application. By the same token, you can actually save your own brushes. I used Shift to select the three last brushes. These are the ones I made. Brushes are added to the list in the order they're created in. And then once they're highlighted, all I've got to do is choose Save Set. Again, another standard Save As dialog box. I'll give it a name. Choose where I want to save it. I'll choose my desktop in this case. And click Save. I'm done with the Preset Manager. And that brush file is now saved to my desktop. And as you can see, that file is now saved onto my desktop. So I have full access to that file whenever I want. So as you can see, brushes are pretty easy to create from your files, and you can do it from anything. I once saw someone who took a whole bunch of scans of Leonardo da Vinci sketches and turned them into brushes. Brushes can be anything. They're not really a brush in real life. They're just like the tip, the shape of the tip you're using. So you can use them to create some really interesting effects, especially when you open that brush options dialog box and start playing with some of the settings like scatter. You can use brushes to get some really interesting things going. Personally, I use them a lot for textures. I use them a lot for making things look distressed or damaged. And I want to simulate the texture of rock or I want to simulate the texture of wood. I'll use them a lot for that. But you can use them for anything. They're only limited by your imagination.
people who use Photoshop Elements as a painting tool, because there are people who paint in Photoshop Elements, like you paint in real life, often use brushes to simulate texture, to create different effects. It's really only limited by the scope of your imagination and what you want to create.